As Alien 3 concluded, we saw Lieutenant Ellen Ripley destroy the Xenomorph creature on Fury 161, and confront Wayland yutani face to face as they tried to attain one last specimen, the Alien Queen, growing inside of her. Rather than letting this happen, Ripley made the ultimate sacrifice by falling into the prison's giant furnace, ending her life and all possibilities for the Xenomorph Queen to propagate. It seemed to be a pretty definitive ending for the character, and for all intents and purposes, the final chapter of the Alien trilogy had been written. There was, however, interest in continuing the series even though Sigourney Weaver was done with the Ripley character. Jorge Sorelegui, 20th Century Fox's executive vice president of production at the time, had a strong desire to move forward with Alien 4. His concept was for Rebecca Jordan, aka Newt, to return to the series leading the way for a sort of Alien the Next Generation angle. Sorelegui sought the aid of Joss Whedon, with whom he had previously worked on the film Buffy the Vampire Slayer, believing the writer's style to be perfect for this new story. Amy Pascal's 2014 book, Joss Whedon, Geek King of the Universe, outlines this brief shining moment in time where Newt was meant to lead Alien 4. Weaver had wanted Ripley killed off, and had very little interest in returning to the franchise, so Sorelegi decided to bring back Newt, the little girl Ripley saved, instead. Although Newt died at the beginning of Alien 3, Sorelegi's idea was that she would be cloned because of the survival skills she demonstrated in Aliens, and would be used by Ripley's former employer to track down the alien for their own research. The cloned Newt, in effect, would become a Buffy-like character, a young girl imbued with special skills and strengths to take out a particular enemy. After receiving the go-ahead from the studio to develop a treatment, Sorelegi reached out to Joss because the Buffy movie script demonstrated his ability to bring such a character to life. Joss was incredibly excited and agreed to take on the project. This was the chance of a lifetime and opportunity to write the path of a favorite franchise that had gone astray. After reading their 30-page film treatment, studio executives told Joss and Sorelegi that they found the reboot idea exciting, but they were worried about the success of an alien film without Ripley. At first, Joss rebelled against the idea of scrapping their Newt concept to revive Ripley. But he was a longtime fan of the Alien series, and this was his chance to be involved, so he eventually went back to the drawing board. While earlier drafts of Whedon's Alien Resurrection screenplay have found their way online and made available for viewing, this 30-page treatment involving Newt has not. We can only really speculate as to how this story was presented and how closely it may relate to the final film released in 1997. Surely, the general concept is there, of a military vessel and cloning operation gone awry. Likely, the supporting cast of the Space Pirates were in there too, in some form. I have a hunch that the whole underwater chase, ladder escape sequence was included somehow too. It's just such a tentpole and standout part of the movie, it's hard to imagine any incarnation, even 30 pages, without it. I'd also wager that the newborn alien, which took on many forms throughout writing and production, was part of this treatment. By extension, the original ending conceived by Whedon, a showdown between our heroine and the newborn in a snowy forest on Earth, may have been part of the pitch as well. A climax on Earth always seemed to be something Whedon was particularly proud of, and especially disappointed with in how this was completely axed from the final film. Had this been a story starring Newt instead of Ripley, such an ending would have been a good bridge into new possibilities of continuing the series. This would have acted more as a Part 1 in the Next Generation concept instead of a Part 4 in the Alien series. With either Ripley or Newt as the lead, the crucial factor is somehow being able to bring a character back from the dead. The conceit of Alien 4 has always been the cloning operation. It fits well enough with the series, and we've definitely seen some more improbable and, for lack of a better word, lazy ways to resurrect a character in other series, so it's not the most difficult hurdle to jump over. Either way, both the bodies of Ripley and Newt ended up in Fury's furnace, and the brief explanation from Dr. Gediman is that tissue samples were found. I suppose it makes just as much sense that samples from Newt could have been found in order to make her clone as well. In a previous video, I took a closer look at just how not only Ripley was able to be cloned, but cloned with the embryo of the Alien Queen inside of her. The novelization of the film, written by A.C. Crispin, offers some elaboration. Here's an excerpt. It was unprecedented work. The samples were varied enough, and there were plenty of cells, but the DNA was in chaos. It had been an amazing discovery to find that the embryonic alien that had already infected Ripley's body when the blood and tissues were taken had not stopped its invasion there. Like a virus, the embryo had actually invaded the host's living cells, every last one of them, and forced them to change to accommodate its growth and development. 
It was a major breakthrough in adaptive evolution. It was a way to guarantee that any host, any host at all, would provide whatever it was the developing embryo needed, even when the host's own body was inadequate. The infusion of alien DNA into Ripley's own had been how they'd managed to incubate her and her embryo. But it hadn't been easy. They'd had to separate out the DNA right down to the RNA, reconstruct it, try to get it functioning. It had been work. Incredibly hard and frustrating work. And it had taken years. While ultimately I think it was wise to leave it as vague as possible in the final film, I do appreciate the additional explanation found in the novel. It amounts to a lot of jargon and far-fetched science fiction fantasy, but it's acceptable and not out of the realm of what could be expected from the alien's mysterious nature. Essentially, this DNA snapshot was taken at the exact moment Ripley lived with the alien queen in her chest, and it was retrieved by the Auriga scientists. The suggestion in Pascal's Whedon biography is that Newt would have been cloned simply for her knowledge and experience with the xenomorph, rather than being a host for a specimen. Assuming this wouldn't be a comics-inspired trip to the alien homeworld, then we can assume the aliens would have also been cloned at some point by samples left behind. Again, not the most implausible thing in the world. The quadruped alien on Fury left behind shed skin, plenty of drool and slime, and tiny pieces of itself after it was doused in the cold water and exploded. This would end up drawing even further inspiration from the unproduced William Gibson concept of Alien 3, where samples left behind on the Sulaco and on the Bishop android were cloned, resulting in more aliens running amok. But maybe, just maybe, they could have returned to a concept we only saw in the 1992 comic book adaptation of Alien 3. There, it is depicted that Newt was initially the host for the Alien Queen. It grew inside her, but when the EEV crash-landed into the waters of Fury, Newt began to drown. As an act of self-preservation, the Queen Embryo, not yet fully formed as necessary, escaped from Newt's throat and found refuge in Ripley where it remained until the end of the story. So, since Newt was in fact a host, this same DNA snapshot concept could have been applied to her clone as well. A far reach, maybe, but regardless, it would have been left as a possibility for the new story based on the information that preceded it. No matter how we would have been able to get there, the idea remains the same. It's Newt as the main character in the new movie. She's carrying the torch. She's fighting aliens. Having a teenaged Buffy-like character certainly would have been interesting to see. Considering this was being written after the 1992 Buffy movie, but before the Buffy TV series came out, I'd say it probably would have been more in line tonally with the TV series. Not the comedic, almost campy kind of character like what we saw with the Christy Swanson Buffy, but a little more serious, a little more straightforward with the material, though not without a sense of levity, and the inevitable Joss Whedon one-liners. Had Weaver refused and stayed firm on not returning, I think it could have worked with Newt. I don't think the Newt clone would have been quite as dark as we saw presented with Ripley 8, but surely there would be some turmoil with the character. Looking at Newt as a character and what was explored with her in the comics, there's a lot of trauma to be dealt with in the aftermath of Aliens. Memories of her family and her parents' doomed expedition to the alien derelict. The weeks of hiding and evading pursuit from the monsters that had overtaken the Hadley's Hope colony. And the daring escape that took place once Ripley and the Marines arrived. It all would have left some deep psychological scarring. There could have been a lot to consider with shaping this character for another movie as she grew older. Though she met a terrible fate in Alien 3, Joss Whedon's concept for Alien 4 would have given her another chance. And who knows, maybe they actually would have ended up casting someone like Sarah Michelle Gellar or other actresses who were considered for the Buffy TV series role such as Julie Benz or Katie Holmes. I'd say it probably would have been unlikely that they'd get Carrie Henn to reprise the role. Aliens was her one and only movie, she was done acting at that point, and they probably would have wanted a somewhat recognizable name. There are so many different ways they could have gone in bringing back Newt in teenage form, though. So many possibilities to continue the story of an already established character. What's even more interesting to think of is what it could have led to. Joss Whedon did have plans, seemingly from the very beginning of his concept, to follow up with a fifth film that would have taken place mainly on Earth. Obviously, since Sigourney Weaver did end up reprising her role for Resurrection, the fifth film would have included Ripley 8 as well. 
But if things had turned out differently and the trajectory had played out as a new trilogy starring Newt, then it may have turned out similar to the original comics and the Earth War storyline. I'm a huge fan of that storyline, and while I wouldn't feel a need or desire for it to be adapted exactly, I am still perplexed at the fact that even with now four Alien movies released after those comics concluded, six if you count the Alien vs. Predator movies, nothing even the slightest bit similar has even been attempted. But in finding ourselves back into the world of comics, I really think this 30-page, newt-starring treatment should see the light of day in some form. Given the history of seeing William Gibson's Alien 3 adapted into a comic, and Dan O'Bannon's original Alien screenplay adapted into a comic, why not give us a taste of the alternate Alien 4? The problem is, those aforementioned comics were produced during Dark Horse's run, and the Alien property is now owned by Marvel. I'm not 100% sure if they'd even be interested in that, unfortunately. But you may recall one of Gibson's scripts, an earlier draft from the comic adaptation, was adapted into a novel by Pat Cadigan. That was with Titan Books, so maybe they'd want to explore the concept. Ideally, I'd love to see a writer work with Joss Whedon, take a look at the original treatment, absorb as much as he has to say about his original concepts for Part 5 and possibly 6, and adapt that into a new trilogy of books. That, I think, would be absolutely amazing. At the very least, someone somewhere could at least leak that 30-page treatment. It's got to be out there somewhere. I think it's time we all have a look. But those are just my thoughts on the matter. I'm curious how you feel about it. Do you think an Alien 4 with Newt could have worked? Would it have been better than what we got with Ripley 8 and Alien Resurrection? Where do you suppose the story on Earth may have gone? Comment below and share your thoughts. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. My very special thanks goes out to Brandon James, Xeno Shadowmorph, and Xenozip, Queen Tears of the Patreon Hive. Thank you to Gregory Ford and John Griggs, the Hive's Praetorians. A very special thanks as always to Lady Anne in the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. And thank you so much, Nicholas Butta, the Alien Theory Wayland yutani Executive. I'm incredibly grateful for your support. I'll be back soon with more videos. In the meantime, you can follow me on social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.